Good morning, ladies and gentlemen. Welcome back to CSC Plus. This is episode number two. I wanted to make sure I got this episode out so that I could give you guys some Thursday night football picks on the YouTube channel. You can also go and join the Discord. The link will be in the description. That will be where my plays are always at, and it is free to join via the invite link, so you can go ahead and check that out. But with further ado, I want to get right into the picks and plays because there is a ton of them we got Thursday night football tonight. I'm going to talk Sunday night football. Um, in terms of mixed martial arts, there isn't very much. The PFL Europe card isn't even being broadcasted to the U.S. from what I'm hearing. So the only combat that we really have is 1FC, and I don't really have a sports book to gamble at on. So we are going to stick, which is going to be rare for this CSC Plus podcast. It's going to be more combat focused, but this week we obviously have to look away from combat and look to other places um, for content for you guys. So that's going to come from the NFL. It's going to come from the Canelo fight this Saturday, which we'll talk about today as well. But without further ado, we can get straight into Thursday night football. Detroit is headed into Green Bay, both teams 2-1. and one. Green Bay is an underdog, a home underdog coming into this matchup. This is the first time that a Detroit team is headed in to Lambeau Field as a favorite. The last time that it happened is was in 2017 when Brett Hundley led them against Matthew Stafford. And Detroit is 3-0 and against the spread against Green Bay in their last three matchups. But... The games last year, very low scoring, hitting the under. They were at 49 this year. They've dropped the over-under, three points to 46. But I feel like both of these offenses are kind of high-powered this year. Detroit especially with the Amon St. Brown and stuff like that. But both defenses are also very, very good. So I don't doubt that this game is going to be very close to that 46 number. But we're going to look for some interesting plays. And we'll start with Detroit's number one, Amon Ross St. Brown. With back-to-back -back over 100-yard games and over six receptions, that's pushing this line. We have him his receptions at 6.5 for this game. And his yard over under, I believe, is 77 and a half. But to be fair to St. Brown and this Green Bay Packer defense, he only averaged 49 yards in their last two meetings last year. So could this be a place for an under bet? Maybe if you guys want to look there, he also only averaged five receptions, which is two receptions below what would you would need to cash the over. So I would tell you to stay away from betting that St. Brown over. On the Green Bay side, they like to spread the ball around. I don't know if we have very much news yet on Christian Watt. Watson. So that is something to look out for to see if he's playing Aaron Jones as well. There are going to be two big guys to shift this line. If those two don't play, I really do think that Detroit minus one line or whatever that is sitting at currently minus one and a half on the Detroit side. I do think that I, I like that line, even with them being on the road in a divisional matchup, which honestly a little bit tougher for teams to compete and do well in. But looking again, I'm a big defense better. I like to bet sack props. I like to bet interception props. I like to bet field goal props. And we like to look at that. And the best place to get those odds is going to be bet 365 for us. So the last meeting between these two teams saw seven field goals combined with both teams making two or more Green Bay's over one and a half field goals is sitting at minus 120. It is the favorite. And Detroit's over one and a half field goals is also at minus 125. Looking at the defensive lines, Aiden Hutchinson is the star of the game. Two sacks in the last year's game against Green Bay in that final game where the Lions picked up the victory. But the Lions only sacked Rodgers twice last year. It was those only those two sacks that we saw. And both Goff and Love have only been sacked three times over the span of this year with the three games so far. And both are middle of the pack in terms of the pressure per drop back. So the O-lines are holding up pretty well for Jordan Love at 18.9% and Jared Goff at 24.3%. While both are top five least sack quarterbacks percentage-wise QBs in the NFL. This is a very even matchup as I said in Green Bay they're still coming in as the underdogs probably because of some of the injuries that they have to keep players and key positions and against the spread I'll lean Detroit I'm going to do against the spread for every game so my against the spread pick for this one is Detroit I wouldn't make that pick confidently you'll see in my discord if I do end up making that a cash play in a prop in a same game parlay or something like that but for now it's not a current bet pick in the discord but something that I am going to be looking at. So keeping on with the NFL side of things, we will jump to Sunday Night Football and look at a couple games, starting with the early slate, Atlanta at Jacksonville, technically at Jacksonville, but the game's in London, and Jacksonville is getting a minus three-point advantage here. And I want to focus in on Desmond Ritter for my research. He's kind of coming into his own in the last two games, and he did look very, very good in his Week 2 win. He's surpassed 200 yards in his past two games, 
teams after having a rough week one, which is normal for a rookie quarterback. He had 201 passing yards last week, being sacked seven times, and he threw for 237 yards in Green Bay. A pretty good pass defense, in my opinion, and his line is lower than 200 at 190 and a half against Jacksonville, and at a 200-yard milestone, you can get that at plus money, plus 115. Another rookie, C.J. Stroud, for example, of the Houston Texans, put up over 280 yards last week. I really do like Desmond Ritter's over 190 yards passing in this game. Ritter was also sacked seven times if we take a look at Ritter's stat line. And I only see two Jaguars currently listed on the to record a sack prop, but in the Discord, you can definitely see me closer to the game, leaning towards one of those Jacksonville pass rushers to pick one of them to get to Ritter in this game. In a lean-wise, I would probably lean Atlanta plus three. I think Jacksonville hasn't looked very impressive. This is a shaky bet for me because the Jaguars do have uh, Trevor Lawrence, who didn't play great last week, and Doug Peterson, who gave up play calling, I believe, or is play calling for the offensive side of the ball, which might be a mistake. We will see, but Atlanta plus three for the against the spread picks. Then we have my favorite team, Carolina, taking on Minnesota. They are a plus four home underdog. The spread has gone from Vikings minus two and a half all the way up to Vikings minus four, and it's going to continue to open up for a good reason. Carolina has played like a pile of dog shit over this season. Kirk Cousins is leading the NFL in passes completed, pass attempts, passing yards, passing touchdowns, and the team is still sitting as at an NFL worst 0 and 3 through 3 games they're sore they have the most sorry record with the Panthers but I really really like Minnesota minus 4 here then we have Washington at Philadelphia divisional matchups always look fun we'll take a look at two of them right now starting again with Washington Philadelphia we got two teams that started the year kind of similarly both off to 2 and 0 starts looking good and then they completely separated in week at number 3 the Howell led Commanders got absolutely blown out by the Buffalo Bills and the Eagles continued their own success spearheaded by a, a very very good run defense and a great pass rush Washington's pass blocking is statistically one of the worst in the NFL over three weeks, giving up 19 sacks in just three games to their quarterback, Sam Howell, and giving you an idea of how bad this kind of is. The Broncos are the bottom of the league in total sacks. They've only had four sacks over three games. So three games, one of them against Washington, the four sacks all came against this Washington Commanders offensive line. I love the Eagles pass rushers to get a sack in this game. I will probably put money on each one of them in this game. I think that they're going to be pressuring Sam Howell all night. And although the sack numbers aren't super high for the Eagles, they blitz at a 20% rate per play. That puts them bottom six in the league, but they are top five in hurrying the quarterback up by percentage at 15.2. So they get pressure with the front four. So any of the four on that D line, I'm looking at two record a sack and for bet 365 the two record a sack prop is actually a half a sack or more so if they both get a sack or both contribute to a sack and you get a half number on each of them you're going to make money on both of them so they're going to bolster my same game parlays this week we're going to see a lot of eagle sacks in the discord also a little note on the eagles kicker elliot is top five in field goals attempted and made so far in the eagles game so eagles over one and a half field goals will probably be a play for me and i'll also look at the favorite eagles minus one and a half in the first quarter i don't doubt washington's going to come out and play better in this game they're going to try and come back from last year but i do think the eagles pass rush is going to get to howl a couple times early in this game and and they're just going to wreak havoc on this washington team so eagles minus one and a half in the first quarter or eagles minus four and a half by halftime give them a little more time to take a lead will probably end up being a play in the discord but again closer to game time we will make a play and then probably my game of the week the last game we will look at Miami at Buffalo 3-0 Miami 2-1 Buffalo the one loss kind of fluky Buffalo play in the Jets when Aaron Rodgers went down it was a fluke game in my opinion but this game divisional matchup two behemoths in the NFL Miami number one in points per game Buffalo is number two in points per game Miami number one in passing and rushing yards per game coming off the 70 piece of the Denver Broncos last week Buffalo's defense is leading the NFL in takeaways seven of them interceptions top of the league and number two in sacking the quarterback overall pass defense landing in the top three this matchup is awesome and I don't looking back at that play that I had for the Eagles defensive pass rushers Buffalo doesn't have the greatest pass rushers in the world Leonard Floyd's a good one um, and they do have another guy in Buffalo that can get to the quarterback 
but not too great. And they were able to rack up sacks on how I think they had seven sacks in this game. So I really, really like the Eagles sacks and Buffalo. They're, they're playing the pass really well, whether it's corner shutting down open receivers or what they're doing. But the sack numbers for the Buffalo defense is very, very good. So I'll be watching player to record a sack and kicking points for this game. You'll see with me, I'm big on defenders to record a sack. I'm big on kicking points and field goals in a lot of these games because these two teams are going to go up and down the field. So you're going to get a lot of kicking points and you're going to probably get some red zone stops from some of these defenses that are going to lead to some field goals. That's three kicking points, which is very, very useful to me when you can get them at very close to even minus 120, minus 110 range. To his interception line, knowing that Buffalo's defense is this good is too rough for me. It's a little too high at minus 170, but I'd fill the same game with it. And I'm also surprised a team that has never, that has run the ball so successfully in the Miami Dolphins is getting a Mostert line at only 52 and a half rushing yards, I guess because of the introduction of A-Chain, but I do like the Mostert 52 and a half. He can break that out in one run with this Miami defense of Miami offensive line. And the fact that Buffalo is more of a pass defense team than opposed to a rush defense team. So those are going to be my looks for this episode of CSC plus. I don't know if we're going to do another one. We might have the boys on on Friday to do picks Friday but it'll probably come out Saturday morning. So take a look out for CSC Plus episode number three, which will probably be a picks play from a bunch of different voices, a bunch of different heads, a bunch of people from the CSC family. But we can also go ahead and move on to the Soul Combat event that I'm looking at. We'll cap off this episode with Saul Canelo Alvarez taking on Jermel Charlo, the younger brother of the two Charlos. And it was announced this week that Showtime, in, in the side news, announced Showtime is actually going away from boxing. Showbox is going to be canceled. It's going under after 2024. They said that they're going to continue to do mega fights, but the advantage and the money that was coming in from their events was not reaching the risk or the amount that they were putting in. So Showbox will probably end up getting scrapped completely. But we're not talking about that here. We're going to talk about the Charlo versus Canelo fight. It's a close fight, according to the lines in terms of Canelo Alvarez. Canelo, Canelo has seen some pretty big lines favor him in his recent past, but this line is as close since Canelo fought Triple G, and the opening lines were around minus 215 on the side of Canelo, but it's widening with Alvarez reaching a round at minus 450. Charlo's only loss was in 2018. Charlo has a three-inch reach and a four-inch height advantage, although he's the fighter that's moving up to the super middleweight division. Uh, if you guys didn't know, Jermel Charlo is the super welterweight or junior middleweight champion, undisputed champion. He's jumping in with a massive opportunity to try and take out Canelo Alvarez in a, what's going to be a great money fight for Showtime, sports for Showtime pay-per-view. It's continuing to look like a pretty solid year for boxing, in my opinion. Coming off super fights that were made like Crawford versus Spence, Garcia versus Davis, etc. This year has been pretty solid for boxing and Canelo coming in rightfully as the favorite. Taking a look at the lines, I think Charlo deserves respect here and I think that he's getting it a lot of the times. If if I was at all to gamble, I'd probably take Canelo to get the fight completed later on. You can parlay a same game with over seven and a half rounds. Um, Canelo seven to 12 rounds and Canelo to land a knockdown for plus 650. So 6.5 times your money for a 6.5 X, which is, which I do like. And people are talking about Canelo's age or his hand injury in regards to his last fight against John Ryder. But we will see with this Charlo fight. He's going to need to bring his A game against a lengthy guy. And Canelo isn't unbeatable as we saw when he took on Bival, albeit Bival, a massive heavy, a light heavyweight. But still, I feel like Canelo's going to have an edge here probably ends up taking the victory in this one that'll wrap up this episode of csc plus again a shorter episode but we do have a lot of lines that will be coming to you guys so make sure you guys check the description but those are my opening up the video with your thursday night football picks again we're probably riding with detroit minus one and a half on the road and we'll probably see some field goal props in terms of this game but again you can look to the pinned comment you can look to the discord link will be in the description for any plays that we do have for thursday night football and we'll probably end up recapping them on saturday's episode of csc plus but i will see you in the next one thank you guys so much for watching remember to subscribe to combat sports central and i will see you in the next one